Hey, it's Kim and I'm back with another video today. In my previous video, or one of my previous videos, not that I have an actual schedule, um, I mentioned having a lot of fountain pens and that my nephew really wanted me to put together a fountain pen video. A few of you actually agreed and requested the video, so I am definitely very happy to share. Also, shout out to my nephew Rocky. This one's for you. Okay. So I'm going to get started um, showing you all my fountain pens or the fountain pens that are currently in my collection. I will say I'm not a professional pen meister, I don't know, whatever you call it, I'm not a professional. Um, these are just things that I like and I pretty much purchase fountain pens because they're pretty. That's about it. I do like to write and I do journal a lot. Um, I write every single day, so I am into pens. So for that reason, I have a selection of pens that I like to use. I like to use a good quality pen. So I'm gonna walk you through all of the fountain pens in my collection. Um, I'll see if I do maybe like an order. I don't know, we'll see. But to get started, this is the Galen Leather 10 fountain pen holder, something of this sort. It's a zip pouch and I'll have it linked down in the description box. But this is the holder for my fountain pens and I told myself this is what I'm limiting myself to. Just 10, if I can't fit 10, then I don't need it. If, or if I need more than 10, I can't add it to my collection. Of course, you could probably guess that that didn't last very long because you know I use planners or if you've been around my channel for any amount of time or look through my videos, I'm very much into planners and sometimes I have a few going at the same time. So then I started to justify to myself, well, I can have a pen in each planner and then 10 in here. <laughs> so, so that's where we currently are. I think my total at the moment is 13 fountain pens, but we'll walk through all of them and I'll kind of explain to you how I like them. Um, I'll try to do a sample of the writing for each of the pens and this notebook I have here is the Wonderland 222 but I wanted to use it because it does have Tomoe River paper which is very fountain pen friendly so it's really good paper for fountain pens um, so you can kind of see how well they write and really see the flow of the ink and anything else you might be interested in I'll also start this by saying I'm typically a person who likes a fine point pen so most of my pens are fine or extra fine because that's just what I'm into. So let's get started. Um, so these are currently the ones that I have in the pen case. I do have, let's see, this one that I write with every single day and then this one as well, but we'll get to those in a minute. I'm gonna start with the ones that were first in my collection and that was the one of the first, it's the Kaweco or Kaweco. Um, it would help if I kind of figured out the names of these pens. The Kaweco Sport, <laughs> that's the name of the pen. This one is in the macchiato color and this one is a fine point. And I currently have this inked with Robert Oster Thunderstorm. So this was one of the first pens that I added to my collection. So I'll give a sample right here. And I will say that I am left-handed, obviously. So it took a while for me, I actually had to kind of change the grip and the way I write so that it doesn't, obviously I can't talk and write at the same time, but I had to change my pen grip so that I don't smear the inks as I write. Typically I write, well my normal pen grip is like this, and I'm a side writer, I think that's what it's called, so my hand slides from the side. So because fountain pen inks typically are a little wetter than maybe like a, a pen or a ballpoint pen that we might use, it takes a while for the ink to dry, a few seconds, and that's also something that I like about, or something that I like to choose my inks based on, how quickly they do dry. So because of that, I did have to, or I wanted to actually start training myself to do a tripod grip, which is probably the ones that we all learn in school, or the you know initial pen grip that we learn in school, and I wanted to go back to that because I do remember, I used to write that way, 
and I wanted to see if I can write underneath the line of text. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom this in, but my pinky kind of slides or still slides along the paper, but it's below the text. So it's not going to smear what I'm writing. Whereas before I would write this way and it goes right across whatever it is that I'm writing. So anyway, with all of that out of the way, this is the Coveco Sport in macchiato with a fine uh, nib. And I do like it. It's currently inked with Robert Oster Thunderstorm. I do really like an ink that is like a really dark blue-black kind of ink. And this was the first one that I tried. And I don't love it. I don't hate it. But I don't love it. I think I don't see as much of the blue as I want it to see. The next one I did buy around the same time uh, was... Let's see, the next one I bought around the same time was this one. This is the Lamy Safari in charcoal. And this one is an extra fine nib. And what I've come to realize about Lamy, um, or fountain pens in general, I think the nib size is not very standard. So you can't assume that all fine point nibs will write exactly the same. They do not. I actually feel that this extra fine Lamy writes thicker than most of my fine point pens. So I'll give you an example. I don't know if this one's called charcoal or charcoal, charcoal matte, I'm not sure. But this one is inked with diamine or diamine, diamine Sherwood, which is a really dark green color, which is really pretty. I do really love it. But as you can see, so this Caveco was a fine point and then this Lamy is supposed to be an extra fine. And this one is a lot thicker than the fine nib on the Coveco. And I know there are differences depending on the country of origin for the manufacturers of the pens. I'm not in it that deep to even remember, you know, what's what or anything, but that is something to keep in mind. If you are interested in purchasing a fountain pen, maybe uh, look for some samples online or some samples in like YouTube videos to see if it's probably something you would like to have in your collection. The next pen is... What was it? Oh, it was the Twisby Eco, and the color is cement gray. And the nib I got on this one is medium, I believe. You can see like the etching down there, and it tells you what size the nib is. I'm pretty sure this one's a medium, though I can't see it all that clearly. And those, these were the three that I got first when I first got into fountain pens. They're kind of like entry level. They're not super cheap. <laughs> they're probably in the $30 range, somewhere around there, but they're entry level and I did want to get a variety of nib sizes just to see what I like. So this was fine, extra fine, and then this one is medium. And I guess that was a mistake on my part because even though I did hear, you know, that nib sizes vary, um, I didn't expect for them to vary this much. So, I mean, if I had gotten the same like within the same manufacturer, different nib sizes, then that probably would have made a lot more sense, but I didn't. So again, this is the Twisby Eco in cement gray. And the ink I have in here is, oh, Diatromentus Plum. And again, this is a medium nib. And you can see it's pretty similar to the Lamy Safari, which is supposed to be an extra fine. So completely different, maybe not as bold as I thought it would be. I kind of wanted to use this um, as a bold point pen, like when I want to do headings or things of that nature, but it's really not that far off from the other ones in my collection. Actually, at the time when I first purchased this, it wasn't far enough off from like the Lamy Safari. But I think these are probably the two boldest pens that I have in my collection because as I said, all of them are pretty much in that fine point range because that's where I am most comfortable. And these all do twist on and the Eco, you can post it, which means you can put the top 
right on the pen. There are a lot of fountain pens that you can't do this with. So that's important to note. If you want something you can um, travel with or walk around with, that's easy to carry. You might want a pen that you can post. Otherwise, if you can't post it, you'll have to put this somewhere. And then it's probably gonna get lost if you're like me. So that is another thing. The Coveco, you can post it, of course. This is a very small pen. It's meant to be a, like kind of like a mini pen. So you have to kind of post it, unless you have a larger or really small hand, you might have to post it in order for it to feel comfortable and balanced in your hand. The Lamy that I showed you, you can post this one as well. All right, so the next pen, and I don't know if I'm gonna go in order of when I receive them because I honestly don't quite know the order. I do think the next one was this one, and this is the Pilot Prera in a fine point. I don't think this one comes in extra fine. And this pen I actually really, really do like. This one is also in that entry level range in terms of price point. And I would say um, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> the ink in this is Diamine, Diamine Marine. I'm pretty sure that's it. And this is a fine nib. But this pen writes extremely smooth. I'm very impressed with it. If you like a smooth writing pen, if you like something that is easy to carry around, it's pretty slim and it's not too long, I suggest going with the Pilot Prera. My one request would be that it came in extra fine. I don't believe it does, and I feel like it only comes in maybe four colors, something like that. So it's a little limiting, you know, if you want variety in your pen collection, but if you're entry level and you like a smooth writing pen, I suggest the Pilot Prera. I also do like that it doesn't have a twist on cap. It has sort of like a suction-y magnetic kind of thing. So, I do like that. And, I don't know if you can tell, but I keep moving the pen case down so that it doesn't <laughs> sit on top of the inks. This is in the undyed color, and I don't baby any of my things, like my planners or, or stationary items, as you can tell, but I don't, you know, want to sit it right in ink. You know, that would be a little irresponsible of me maybe I don't know is that the word anyway the next one like I said I'm not sure if I'm going in order but this is the Coveco Sport and the aluminum so it's a Coveco AL which stands for aluminum sport and this is in the golden espresso color and I absolutely love it I think it was like a special edition pen so it was one of the ones that I just fell in love with the looks of it um, I knew that I already liked this Coveco Sport, so I figured why not try it. When I originally purchased it, I did get it with an extra fine nib, and that nib was extremely scratchy. I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely hated it. So before I even knew that there was a such thing as, I believe they're called Nib Meisters or Nib Masters, like I don't know where one would be near me. I'm pretty sure I could probably find one. I'm in like the New York, New Jersey metro area. But before I even realized that was, a th that was a thing, I just ordered a medium nib and swapped it out. And I love the color of this. And like I said, I ordered the medium nib so that I could have a variety. And the ink that's in here is actually Coveco ink. I think it is summer purple or something like that. I ordered it in the medium nib. I wanted to have something a little bolder, a little thicker. I don't use it a whole lot, but I use it often enough. So that's the Coveco Sport. And the aluminum version, the color is golden espresso. Now, I actually, this is the first pin that I realized um, that there are differences in whether or not you like to hold a pin. I didn't realize that was a thing. I mean, I heard of it, but uh, this one feels different to me. <laughs> I would say it's not my preferred type of pin to hold, and I have no idea why. I know it's aluminum. 
I feel like it always feels cold to me, which is uncomfortable. I think my hands in general are always cold. So that makes the, the pen really slippery in my grip. Like my hands don't warm up, the pen doesn't warm up, so it doesn't kind of nestle or just feel very comfortable. I would have to be writing for a very long time before it just feels comfortable. All, otherwise, it just feels like I'm holding a really cold pen, which is something I don't like. Never knew that <laughs> until I started, until I had this pen. So I don't know, maybe keep that in mind. I don't know, or maybe it's just a weird thing. It's probably just a weird thing. But the aluminum um, does call for like a higher price point. It's um, a heavier pen, a weightier pen, as you could say. So that does come with a higher price point. The next pen I'll show you is going to be, it's actually gonna be this one. This is the Lamy Vista, which is just like this Lamy Safari that I have, but it's just called the Vista because it's a demonstrator pen, meaning it's completely clear. And this one I purchased from a fellow planner person on Instagram. She was de-sashing a few pens. It was really inexpensive and I couldn't not get it. This one is a fine point. So again, I knew that it wasn't as fine as the other ones in my collection. So I was okay with getting this one. Lamy Vista. And the ink in here is Sailor uh, Ink Studio. I believe it's 162, I'm pretty sure. If that's wrong, I'll put it on the screen. But I believe it's Sailor Ink Studio 162. And this ink is really cool. Here you can't really tell. It does look like a dusty bluish kind of color. But in certain thicknesses of nibs and in certain papers, it actually does shade. And I don't even know if I'm using the correct term, but it has some like light pink undertones. There'll be some light pink edging around it. Like if you did like a really thick swab of it. I don't know if it'll show here, but it is really cool. So these are, that's another thing I've come to learn and love about fountain pens is that you can get inks with different properties and different um, looks that could be really cool. I don't have any shimmering inks. Actually, I do have one, but not inked up um, because I hear that they're really hard to clean out of your fountain pen. So I just kind of don't even bother because I don't like to clean my fountain pens all that often. <laughs> I do clean them. It's just you know, not something I'm doing every single week. All right, the next pen I'll show you is actually, I guess, from the same person on Instagram, but this was purchased a while after that other one. She was also de-stashing this one, and it was one that is on my wish list. It's the, what is this? Platinum Century 3776. So this is a platinum uh, fountain pen which is one of the higher end fountain pen brands and this color is very classic I love it the black with the gold trim you can post this when it's really nice it has a really broad nib just in terms of the way it looks but this is a soft fine nib so the point is a soft fine and that's the way it writes now I've had some issues with this pen first of all it got lost in the mail um, I believe, and I still stand by this, I think my mail carrier quit that day because I had uh, two packages coming, this one and another one, and both of those packages were lost for about two months. I kid you not. My mail carrier vanished. I don't know if the post office, I don't know what they thought, but they marked it as delivered, and then I had to go through this whole thing. Luckily enough, the person who sold this to me did open up a dispute and I guess it went through that whole review process and um, I was issued a refund, which was amazing. And then two weeks later, the pen showed up in the mail. So I don't know. So, you know, I kind of felt bad <laughs> about the fact that I got the refund um, and the pen still came. So, I don't know, but but that kind of did leave a bad taste in my mouth about the pen, even though it wasn't the pen's fault. But when I received it, um, I learned that it it doesn't like me, or I don't like it, or I don't know how to write with this type of a nib. It's like a flexible kind of nib, and if I change the way I hold my hand, it can write better. I've also heard that if you 
kind of right for a long time as in like months <laughs> you know it can kind of warm up to you but as you can see like this is ridiculous the ink that is in here is platinum carbon I feel like it's platinum carbon something I'm not sure but this is a soft fine nib it doesn't like me I still try and I've researched it and I'm not the only one who feels this way about this pen and this nib so I could continue to try it out my next plan of attack I was actually gonna clean it out really well and use some like uh, thumb pen solution cleaner stuff and see if maybe that would help a bit more or just try and use it a lot but I don't know we'll see what happens oh it's called platinum carbon black I think that's just the name of the ink that's in here but it's a gorgeous pen <laughs> I'll give it that next pen I'm gonna show you is oh nothing on that side is well as you can see the rest of these are Twisbees which I'll get to in a minute the next pen I'm going to show you is actually going to be this one this is also platinum it's a platinum Kurdos, Um, and it's a retractable pen which in terms of fountain pens absolutely has my heart there aren't a lot of retractable fountain pens I have another one um, that is probably a popular one and then there's one other that for whatever reason I'm not interested in I think maybe I just don't like the way it looks and I can't even remember who makes it but this is the Kurdos and I really do love it so this one a lot of people complain about it because it's thick like it's a very thick pen also to take it apart it's kind of involved um, like you gotta twist this and twist that and put that notch there so it's a little bit weird I thoroughly admit <laughs> the ink that's in here is it's actually Sailor Shikuri and the color is Chushu. So the ink that's in here, I believe that's how you spell it, is a gray with like purple undertones and it's really pretty. This is a fine nib. So you can't really see any of the shading of that ink, but it's still something that I do enjoy. It's an ink that I do enjoy and I've used it in quite a few of my pens and I love it in every single one of them. But this is the Platinum Curados and it's a pen that I feel like you can carry around because it's retractable that just makes it easy but the pen is very long so I guess if you put it next to I don't know this is a standard size pen that's a little bit longer than that if I put it next to the Pilot Prera it seems to be a lot longer than that so it would be maybe annoying to carry it around like this what is it called the knock can't remember the name of what that part of the pen is but the retractable part is really long and I don't know does like does it have to be I doubt it but it's really long but I love it and it comes in a lot of cool colors so now I'll take you through what's left in here and these are Twisbees so these are all Twisbees obviously I have a thing for Twisby which I didn't realize until later on in my fountain pen journey so I do have all these five I already showed you the Twisby Eco which is that one and then these two are the same but I'll take you through each this is the Twisby Diamond Mini let me look that up hold on okay yes this is the Twisby Diamond Mini and it's really pretty it's the white and rose gold version as you can see and it writes beautifully it's another one of those like the Coveco I showed you so it's a really short pen so you kind of have to post it in order to use it and this one requires you to twist the cap on in order to post it I guess so you don't lose it I don't know why but anyway so I'll show you how this one writes Oh, this is a medium nib, I believe. Twisby Diamond Mini. And the ink in this is actually Diamine Writer's Blood. And I completely love this ink. It's like a burgundy kind of ink and it has some shading that I don't know if you really can see let me see if I can give you a bit of a closer look this probably isn't working but I don't 
know <laughs> but it gives you like some shading you can see it, it looks darker lighter darker lighter and I really do just love this ink color in general there's another well-known red or burgundy ish um, diamond color it is oxblood and I do have that one I don't love it as much as this one so that's the Twisby diamond mini in medium yeah that's medium and then the next one that was right next to it is the Twisby Diamond Mini. Um, and this one is clearly the clear and silver version. And this is a fine nib. And apparently I can't spell because I have a camera in front of me. Um, this ink... I believe, yes, the Sailor Shikyori um, Shimoya. Another one of my most favorite inks. It's like a bluish grayish kind of color. And it does also have some shading. It's really pretty. But these pens are some of my favorites. Um, I like the Twisbees because they do hold a lot of ink. So this entire middle part you can fill up with ink which is not like other fountain pens I don't know if you can kind of tell in this it has a cartridge in it the red part is like the plunger and it has maybe that much ink and it's really skinny so it doesn't at all hold as much ink as a Twisby would so that's something that's a great feature about Twisbees if you don't like to refill your pens very often also I find that the nibs stay will stay well inked um, they don't dry out on me and I do have to mention though that like I said earlier I do use my fountain pens a lot I do write every single day which is why all of these are inked up I actually <laughs> I actually use them a lot a whole lot so I don't go through periods of time where one of my pens is really sitting for more than like two weeks not being used probably not more than a week being used um, but some of them, you know, might have a scratchy start, as I think like these two did when I first started writing. But these Twisbees are always reliable for me. The next one I'm going to show you is this Twisby Mini. Um, no, Twisby Diamond. And I think it might be like AL to signify aluminum. Does it say it? Oh, so this one is the Diamond Twisby Diamond 580. RG2 so rose gold and this is the second edition I believe that's what that means this one's gorgeous an absolutely beautiful pen I love it this however is another example of a pen that does not post so you see how you can't kind of get it on there really well it won't sit on there well so you just put the top to the side Twisby RG2 and this ink is Diamine Chocolate which is a really dark brown it's a really nice color so that's what's in here oh and the nib is extra fine So as you compare the Twisbees, you can probably tell the differences between the nib sizes. So as I was saying, with my first three up here, when I first got them, I thought I was getting varying nib sizes. But since they were all different brands, they really didn't vary in the way that I wanted them to. <laughs> but here you can see, so the bottom one is the extra fine, the next one is fine, and then the one just above that is medium. So you can see the different weights in the um, writing and how they write. And the last one we have is a Twisby. Oh, that's the last one in my case. <laughs> I do have another one I have to show you. But this is the Twisby um, VAC 700R. Just read the pen, Kim. Okay, so, the, so this is the Twisby VAC 700R. And I really like this one just because it's iridescent. It's extremely pretty. This is another one that does not post all that well. It doesn't even really stay on. Um, and this is one I had to hunt down. I actually got it shipped from another country just because I thought it was super pretty. 
and I don't know, just very unique. So this one is the Twisby Vac 700R, and Vac represents the way it fills. So it fills by way of a plunger, like a vacuum suction kind of plunger thing. I'm not going to show you <laughs> how to do that, but it said that you're able to get a lot more ink. So this one actually can hold, you know, all of this whole barrel full of ink. I don't have mine filled um, just because I just don't, but you can't really tell because the ink is really thick. So yeah, don't have this one filled all the way. And speaking of ink, this one is Sailor Shikuri. Um, sh not Shimoyo, Shigur. Not sure how to pronounce that, but it's a really deep purple. And this is an extra fine nib. And I will say, after showing you all of these inks, Sailor inks are probably my favorite. I haven't found a color or an ink from Sailor that I don't like. So they're um, definitely my favorite. I always pick up a few samples from some pen sellers, especially Goulet pens. Um, I think that's where I get all of my samples from. But they will provide samples of different ink colors. So I do have a couple of other Sailor ink colors that I'm excited to try. All right. And the one other pen that I was talking about, I believe I may have mentioned this in my last planner update video, but this is the Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black. This pen, I love, 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 love. <laughs> I don't know how to express to you how much I actually love it. This is the Fine Point, and I write with this pen every single day. It's the one that lives in my planner. And the ink that's in here is also a favorite. It's the Atramentis Document Ink. And I think it's just in the black color. The plum shade that I showed you up here is also, also a document ink, which basically means, um, what do you call it? It's... I'm trying to think of the term where like you leave it sitting for years and years and years, it doesn't degrade. I'll put it on the screen if I don't think of it, but it's that. Also, it dries really fast and it dries very well. So you can highlight over this actually, which cannot be said for a lot of other fountain pen inks. So this is the fine tip. And like I said, I use this pen every single day. I re-ink it once a week. Um, I could probably go about two weeks without re-inking it, but it's just part of my process, part of my flow, and it lives inside my planner, always. It's the only pen I write with inside my planner. Oh, and I should also tell you that. So in my planners, when I'm doing like my daily planning or anything, I actually only like to use black ink. I know, you're looking at all these colors and you're like, what? You only use black ink? Yes, I only use black ink, but in my journaling, I actually use um, a variety of colors of inks, like all the time. I just use a bunch of different colors, and um, my only rule is that one spread has to be the same color. So I can't use like black over here and purple over here. That would drive me bananas. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But... That's my only rule, but that's where I use all of the colored ink. And that's also why I rotate through my pens very regularly. So none of them really sit without being used, with the exception of this one that I'm still trying to get to love me. I do pull it out every few weeks <laughs> and I try. I try to make it work for me, but it doesn't seem to like, maybe, I, maybe I'm not giving it enough. See, it's completely dry. Like, how is it dry? I just wrote with it up here. I don't know. I got to figure this out. It doesn't like me. Some strokes, it's fine. And then others, like, no ink comes through. If you know what the problem might be with this or what the problem might be with my grip or, I don't know, give me some ideas. I was thinking maybe to switch to an ink that's a lot wetter or that flows, you know, a lot easier, and maybe that would help. 
but I'm not sure. Do I just need to use it more? Are the tines on my nib uneven or something? Do I really need to find a nib meister to fix it? What do you think? If you do know anything about how to make this pen work better for me because it's absolutely beautiful. So with that, I will wrap up my entire fountain pen collection. I don't have specific like rules of where all of these pens live. Well, I do. You know what? I'm lying. I like all my Twisbees to be together. <laughs> I like all the brands to be together, at least. So anyway, so that wraps up my entire fountain pen collection. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to leave them down below. You can message me, um, DM me um, on Instagram. I don't post often. But I still would respond to messages over there. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below or there. And I thank you so much for watching my video today. And to all of you who requested this video, thank you so much. It really does feel good when someone asks for a video on a topic that I really like, but that I'm not sure how, uh, how many other people actually really like it. I don't watch fountain pen collection videos. Um, I probably should because I feel like there's a lot on YouTube. So I don't even know what we normally show, what we should go through, <laughs> what you're expecting. But if you have any questions, um, any comments, leave them down below. Again, I fully appreciate whoever requested this video. And that wraps it up for me. I think I pretty much covered everything. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.